Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation is about the Boko Haram insurgency and the big question about who their finances are. Now, on Monday, the United Arab Emirates announced the names of 38 um, persons who are alleged to be financiers of terrorism and 15 agencies. Now, among them are six Nigerians. Their names are Abdurrahman Ado Musa, Salihu Yusuf Adamu, Bashi Ali Yusuf, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Isa, Ibrahim Ali Al Hassan, and Suraja Abubakar Mohammed. Now, these people have been placed on the UAE's watch list. And this is coming a year after the United Arab Emirates, you know, indicted them for sponsoring Boko Haram in Nigeria. Now, a Nigerian government official was also said, you know, to have been involved in sponsoring the sect. Uh, but government officials in the UAE are yet to publicly name this particular person. And now um, we've invited a security analyst, Mr. Um, Yahuza Getso, to talk about this. Good morning, Mr. Getso. So. Uh, good morning, how are you? Well, good, thank you. So six Nigerians on the UAE watch list for Boko Haram terrorism financiers. What's your reaction? Well, uh, this, uh, the list didn't come to me as a surprise uh, because Nigerian government have already mentioned to uh, publicly, uh, Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, uh, in a statement credited to him many times, uh, he made it very clear that they know the finances of the Boko Haram, they know who they are, and they are working out, more, they are putting out majors and modalities. So probably the excuse we can give them is that probably they have been uh, working hard to get the justification uh, through investigation and ensure that, yes, of course, and probably they were working in collaboration with uh, other multinational corporations. And uh, it is known to us that some arrests were made sometimes back uh, in, in Kano, in some places uh, uh, within the uh, part of Nigeria, in respect to that. So this is, didn't come to us as a surprise. Yeah, but um, do you think that this, this um, investigation should have uh, been released or should have been you know, stated by the Nigerian government itself and not the UAE? Yes, of course. Nigerian government was a bit relaxed uh, because they have not done their homework. Had it been they have done their homework, uh, they, they could have arrested them long before now. And um, the list could have been shared with the international community, not to wait until the United Arab Emirates sharing the list and um, uh, declaring them wanted. This is a, a slap. Uh, it's a diplomatic slap. It's a security slap. And uh, it exposes the weakness of our intelligence. And it also exposes the weakness of Nigeria's uh, 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 investigation procedure. And also, it uh, also exposes the weakness of Nigeria's capability in managing situations, especially dealing with issues of uh, criminal and criminality, especially bilateral and multilateral criminals, especially uh, uh, dealing with issues around the bandatory. These have really made it very clear as we have been saying, uh, that uh, even the bandits within the north central, northwest, northeast, and all part of the country are known, and um, the communities know who they are. It's only that government is not doing what is expected to do. That is it. So, Mr. Getso, how can we rationalize a situation where the government claims to know the sponsors of Boko Haram, and they refuse to disclose that, that list to Nigerians? But when you have security analysts who have, you know, confidential information come out to share that with the media, those people are arrested and questioned. Well, uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, like I, 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 I made mention earlier, uh, uh, this, this have given a, a kind of uh, portray our in, uh, inability, incapability, and even a question on do we really have a sovereign government? Is Nigeria really a sovereign state? Uh, if we are a sovereign state, why can't, why didn't we, we have been clamoring and uh, borrowing money in the name of supporting the security, fighting the insurgency, fighting the Boko Haram, and a lot, huge amount of money, as I've been uh, making it very clear that since independence, there is no government that spent the money uh, to the extent of which the Buhari administration spent uh, in, in respect to security. But yet, there is no result, because... This have exposed more that the Nigerian government was uh, uh, not really, there is no political commitment, no administrative commitment, there is no seriousness 
from the, the Buhari administration. In fact, all the Buhari administration was serious, they could have arrested and even handed, investigated and handed over these guys if it means that handing them over to an international community for necessary action or dealing with them decisively, prosecuting them before the court of law in Nigeria and ensuring that the, need, the needed uh, things has been done. And that could have reduced, couldn't have allowed the number of people that uh, they have been terrorizing. Because it is the, fin the financing them that give them the courage and the confidence and the ability to have uh, killed thousands and uh, uh, destroyed a lot of resources and also uh, displaced a lot of communities and so on and so forth. Okay, well, well let's, uh, I want to go further with some of the things that you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, the Nigerian government dragging their feet um, and allowing the United Arab Emirates to put this information forward first. Um, does, does that also, because, yes, the Minister of Information has said that they know the the sponsors of uh, um, Boko Haram or terrorism. There's also been talks about a, a trial of 400 uh, persons, uh, I think it's meant to be taking place on the 17th, uh, 400 sponsors of Boko Haram. But it, all these things still look shrouded in secrecy. Uh, do, does this slow pace and, you know, the fact that you've described this as the, as the government dragging its feet, does it also then maybe tell you that even now that the UAE has put out this list, not much will be done to find these people. And, and do you agree with those who feel that the Nigerian government has somehow been shielding these persons? Uh, well, I, I, I can't agree that uh, Nigerian government have been shielding uh, because they made an attempt. If they, had, they didn't make any attempt for making any arrests, then we can say that they have been shielding. But since they have made an arrest, and they have made pronouncements on, on several occasions and on several, many different times that they know the sponsors and they know who they are and uh, they, are, they, are, they are working out modalities and they have made some arrests like I mentioned in some of the uh, forex uh, traders. So I think it's, it's a commendable effort, but at the same time, uh, really, Nigerian government did not uh, didn't do what they suspected of them uh, because they could have arrested, detained them, and hand them over to international community uh, if it, if needs be, or deal with them, prosecute them before the court of law in Nigeria, and manage them accordingly. But uh, what is uh, really baffling me uh, and um, uh, any other responsible person is the fact that uh, the arrest has been made for many people uh, by the DSS from the forex market in Kano and other places. But yet, there is no, no feedback to the community, and they have not been prosecuted before the court of law, and uh, there is no information whatever uh, about, uh, their, about their whereabouts, and so on and so forth. So this has uh, really uh, made it very clear that there is no political commitment, and we don't have a serious government, and we don't have a, a committed government who is really serious about the life and property and the issue of fighting the insurgency. They are only making policies, but they are not really ready to fight the, the, the menace of the insurgency. That is very clear. But to some extent, we are now we will now wait to see uh, what Nigerian government will do uh, probably within a week or within three or four days uh, if Nigerian government could be able to uh, to flush, to, to bring out this uh, uh, list, that, uh, list of these guys uh, that uh, uh, United Arab Emirates um, already listed. Okay, yeah, so that really leads to my next question. You, you said, you know, we mm -hmm. need to see what happens in the next few days, in the next week. So what really mm -hmm. should we expect to see from the government? Should we expect the government, the SSS and other security agencies, um, going on a raid, on a hunt for these guys and arresting them? And also, what should be the modalities for prosecuting these persons? Um, you mentioned um, that, you know, the government should find them and take them to the UAE. So does that judicial question come in as to where these people should be prosecuted? Would, should they be prosecuted in the UAE as, as it's the United Arab Emirates government that have gone ahead to do the investigation to find the names of these people? Or should that be the responsibility of the Nigerian government? And if it's for the Nigerian government, do you trust that the government will do its due diligence and ensure that this is this case to the end? Well, in this case, I can't trust the Nigerian government actually in that respect. Uh, but uh, in the case of uh, who is responsible or who is expected to, to prosecute them or to, to deal with them, uh, as, uh, as far as the law is concerned, uh, it depends on the agreement uh, 
the, 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 the memorandum of understanding as far as uh, prosecution is concerned uh, of a criminal, Nigerian criminal found uh, who committed an offense in, the, in UAE or who committed an offense in Nigeria or a UAE uh, indigent uh, that who may be committing an offense in Nigeria. So it all depends on what we have on the memorandum of understanding. The memorandum of understanding will be the determining factor. But at the same time, I am very confident and optimistic that Nigerian government have the law uh, guiding principles in, uh, as far as a legal uh, 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 law is concerned uh, for what to do. So uh, probably after dealing with them, if there is a, a signed agreement or part of the memorandum of understanding for the bilateral relation and diplomatic relation among other charters signed by Nigeria and the uh, other conventions, international uh, United Nations Convention and other things, uh, if that uh, it be, then Nigerian government can and hand them over for on onward uh, uh, action by the United Emir uh, Arab Emirates. Because there may be probably some of the connivers uh, uh, within the United Arab Emirates, because Nigerians alone cannot be in the United Arab Emirates to commit such a huge offense for Nigeria, because it is not only to Nigeria, mm. because it has a link with other terror countries like Mali, like Niger, like Libya, like Somali, like uh, Sudan and other countries where Israel is, where Boko Haram is. So it's a network. <clears throat> so looking at the network, uh, the terrorist behavior, and uh, look at looking at how they, they, they network themselves, definitely there must be a connival somewhere. So there is need to have a kind of bilateral, uh, looking into the bilateral agreement and uh, also looking at the signed convention and looking looking at the uh, point uh, bulletin uh, into that in, in that convention and to see what Nigeria and United um, Arab Emirates have in the bilateral relation and multilateral relation so that it can be dealt according to the international law. So there probably an international court of justice uh, need to be need to come in. But at the same time, Nigeria will also have its own law, uh, which uh, uh, probably if they are in Nigeria, because yet nobody is sure that these guys are in Nigeria, uh, even though it has been made very clear that they are Nigerians. All right. Now, I, I want us to now talk about um, the immediate steps that are expected. I'll talk a little further on the immediate steps that are expected. Um, you know, one thing that has been repeatedly mentioned is the Nigerian government taking action and finding these people, like uh, my colleague here has asked, you know, if they will be prosecuted here in Nigeria or in the UAE. But one thing that, you know, people would also question is if these people can actually be found. Because, of course, Namdi Kano was traced and tracked and eventually found somewhere outside Nigeria. There have been people who have said if you can find him, you know, over there, then it shouldn't be difficult to find you know, presence here in Nigeria, and of course, a terrorist here in Nigeria. Um, do you expect that the Nigerian government will be able to trace these six individuals and find where they are and get them arrested? Do you also think that it's important that this is done? Well, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think I have that confidence. Uh, the reason being the bandits, ordinary bandits who cannot read or write, <laughs> who don't even know where to take the money after collection, uh, kidnapping for ransom or whatever, have given Nigerian government a sovereign state of Nigeria, a so-called sovereign state of Nigeria, uh, an ultimatum. It happens in Kaduna, it happens in Zamfara, it happens in Sokoto, it happens in many parts of the country. So uh, I, I don't think I have that confidence that Nigerian government uh, can really, uh, uh, really have the capability or the willingness to find these guys, arrest them, and do the needful. But we will not preempt the Nigerian security at the same time and Nigerian authority. Like I made mention, we are giving them up to four or five days. Let's see what will happen between now and next week, Monday, uh, probably if we can uh, Nigeria Nigerian security can really, so that uh, probably uh, they will rebuild the conf our confidence and um, uh, regain the, 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 the lost glory. We hope they can do. But uh, uh, from the experience of what happened in the last eight, seven, eight years, uh, I don't think Nigerian uh, security uh, are really serious and uh, they will really have the commitment and other reasons will really allow them to fish out these guys and uh, do the needful accordingly as immediate as possible. 
Okay, um, Mr. Getzo, I, I want us to um, address what now seems to be a misinformation regarding this um, situation, this story. So one of the names that the UAE put out was the name Abdurrahman Addo Musa. Um, reacting to this, Nigerians have gone ahead on social media to share pictures of the Executive Director of Regulatory Corporate Affairs at Nine Mobile, whose name is Abdurrahman Addo. So um, people are saying, oh, this Executive Director at Nine Mobile is a terrorism financier. They're putting his pictures all over social media and there seems to be like a campaign against him. But Nine Mobile has put out a statement saying that their director, um, the director, uh, Abdurrahman Addo, is a respectable law-abiding Nigerian who served the country diligently in public service for over three decades, and that um, his name has no Musa in it. His name is just Abdurrahman Addo and not Abdurrahman Addo Musa, and that the name is pure, purely coincidental, asking Nigerians to disregard that list and understand that you know, it's a case of a mistaken identity. Um, how do you respond to the story? Well, uh, that could be ascertained by only the, uh, the, 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 the court of law. And um, also, the same Abdurrahman Ado, uh, he has all his documents are available. And the uh, United Arab Emirates must have the, their fingerprints and all other required information. A forensic investigation will be conducted. And then we will get the outcome of that investigation will reveal. If the same Ado Musa Ado, Ado, uh, Ado Musa of mobile is the same person that are being uh, suspect, being the suspect or the financier or otherwise. Okay, so Mr. So this can only be uh, revealed by the outcome of the investigation. So I cannot go into this. Okay, so I also want to ask you about the possibility that these six names that the UAE has released are simply just, you know. Um, aliases by these, the real terrorists, you know, names that they have and identities that they have created to cover their tracks. Is that a possibility? Sorry, come again. It breaks. Uh, no. Okay, I'm saying the UAE has released the list and there are six Nigerians mm -hmm. on that list. I called the name earlier on yes. the show. So I'm asking yes, yes. if there is a possibility that these six names are simply aliases, you know, that the actual terrorism financiers um, created to cover their tracks. You know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, definitely they may not be the only six. By the time they are arrested, they are prosecuted, investigation will reveal. I am very confident and I'm very optimistic that they must have, uh, there must be others who are working uh, uh, with them, uh, either directly or indirectly. So probably a more local arrest will be made because if these guys are in United Arab Emirates and they are Nigerians, it means that they should be sending the money through Nigerians who are based in Nigeria for onward, you know, like I keep mentioning, uh, in the case of uh, uh, Bandatri in Northwest, Northeast, and North, uh, Northwest, North Central, and part of Northeast, there are arm importers, there are arm transporters. There are uh, armed traders and there are arms distributors. So definitely there must be uh, some other group of people who are responsible for uh, bringing, uh, transporting and moving the money between one hand and another and also respons responsible for purchasing of arms and movement of the arms. So definitely there must be a part of the intelligence team, uh, maybe a, a rotten uh, personnel within this, the cycle of the security operatives. There may be, I'm not sure, but there are, uh, there are elements that can give us a confidently, we can confidently say that there, there is a link within the country, not only uh, these five guys. So definitely, if the investigation go further, there will be more arrests that will be made locally. If at all, Nigerian government will be serious and will give it the right attention required. Okay, Mr. Getso, I'm not talking about if there are other people besides this six. I'm talking about you know the possibility that these names are fake names, fake identities that were created to cover up the tracks of the real terrorism financiers. Do you think the UAE might have possibly done its due diligence that, you know, it, it found that these are the real identities of the people or all of these are, like I mentioned, fake names, aliases that they've come up with? That, that, that is very possible. 
That is very possible. And all this can only be revealed by the result of the investigation. Oh. So we have to allow the investigation to take uh, its first uh, before we can justify. And uh, based on the feedback that we will get from the investigation team, if at all the serious uh, com there will be a committed and serious uh, investigation team of professionals who can do the needful and uh, uh, bring out the, the feedback. So from there, we can know uh, that uh, probably uh, it is correct or it is wrong. Okay, okay, now let's talk about the 400 that the Nigerian government claims to be sending to trial. It says uh, They say they have 400 names that have been alleged to also uh, be terrorism financers here in Nigeria, and they should be going to trial sometime this month. Um, do you think that these names should also remain anonymous, uh, you know, and of course, well, until proven guilty, or should the Nigerian government go ahead and, you know, share some of these names to the public? No, not, not really. Nigerian government, sh the Nigerian government doesn't have, does, uh, sh shouldn't have uh, bring out this list. They should keep it until uh, the result of the investigation is, uh, is out. Because otherwise, if my name uh, is listed out of the list and um, I, a result of the investigation, it will... Uh, comes out to be negative, that I am not part of, or Mr. A, Mr. B, and C are not part of it, uh, then definitely they will take Nigeria into to, to, to court uh, for, 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 for blackmail and other things. Well, I so guess, I guess these persons have already been arrested. It's not just random names that they throw in there. Because yes, if, if course, they are going to court... They arrested, if they are arrested, I don't know any one of them. Yeah. Do you know? No, of course not. Do you know any one of them? Of course not, and that's what I'm asking. You know, so so the same this this is what I'm trying to find out. So the same way the UAE has put out these 38 names, um, the Nigerian government claims to have 400 persons that have been arrested and will be sent to trial for terrorism financing. Um, do you think that these names should also should still remain anonymous um, all through the trial until found guilty? Yes, of, yes, of course. The list should still remain an, an, an anonymous. Uh, United Arab Emirates has its all reasons. Like I said, usually, you know, in the bilateral relation and multilateral relation, there are certain agreements. Now, uh, United Arab Emirates cannot just say that they have six people. The Nigerian government will want to know who they are. An international community will want to know who they are so that they can quickly be uh, prompted uh, the, the, uh, into uh, the immigration status uh, immigration operations at, uh, at the national and international level, at the bilateral and multilateral level, so that the immigration and other security uh, at the airport and the seaport and other transportation and other uh, proceedings uh, will definitely help the, the, the United Arab Emirates and Nigeria in first striking and arresting them. But these ones in Nigeria, they are already, Nigerian government have done its homework before they go into the arrest. Okay. Um, Mr. Getso, we know that um, the UAE has punishment of up to um, 10 years in prison for those who are found to be involved in terrorism. So we're looking forward to really how this plays out. But lastly, before I let you go, um, w the name Nigeria has been identified as terrorism for too long. And my question to you is how can we redeem the name Nigeria um, in the international community? That is when you have a serious government. That is when you have a sovereign government. That is how, when you have leaders. That is how, when you have commitment from the leaders, political and administrative will. That is when you, you fight corruption. That is when you have uh, illegal proceedings. That is when you end the, 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 the leadership of, uh, uh, of people who believe in themselves and their immediate family um, along with their uh, errand boys, not, uh, 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 and um, it's only when you have the leaders who believe in Nigeria as a country and who have the passion and patriotism. But right now, presently, that is what is the, that is the missing link. We don't have leaders who believe in Nigeria. We don't have leaders who believe in Nigerian sovereignty. We don't have leaders who believe in Nigeria as a country and working towards ensuring that they work for Nigeria, uh, they work for Nigerians, and they work diligently and in accordance with the respect of law and also with the respect uh, to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are having something else. We only have geography as Nigeria, but in practice, uh, the constitution of Nigeria is not being respected by our leaders of today and our leaders of yesterday. So mm -hmm. until and unless we have reorientation uh, uh, in the outcome of our actions and inactions, that is the time when we will have that. 
Okay. All right. Yoza Getzo, thank you very much uh, for your time this morning. It's a very interesting thank discussion. And uh, we'll see thank where it goes from here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Okay, All right um, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into our next uh, discussion. And that is a protest at the United Nations. A couple of weeks ago, we had spoken about this. Yes. Um, it was meant to be a one million man, man match. match. Yes. And uh, what we're saying is that... Um, um, Yoruba Nation agitators have actually gone ahead um, to protest in front of the United Nations, um, the General Assembly that they're having in New York. And uh, we'll basically talk more about that when we come back from the break. Will the protests work and how's it going? Stay with us.